EduCreation's iPad app, creating your second lesson and incorporating graphics. After viewing this tutorial, you will know how to set up and record a lesson incorporating graphics, how to save a lesson to an already existing EduCreation's account, have learned tips for letting students use EduCreation's, and know how to access lessons created by other EduCreation's members. To get maximum benefit from this tutorial, it is suggested you watch it on a computer while practicing the skills demonstrated in the EduCreations app on your iPad. You can pause and rewatch any portion of the video at any time as needed. In this video, we'll take a look at using the EduCreations app to record a demonstration for students, and we're going to incorporate some graphics. So I'm going to launch EduCreations and the lesson I previously did is in here still and it's all also up on the EduCreations website. One quick thing to note here, if I were to delete this lesson from my iPad, it would actually delete from the website as well. They are synced up. So you want to be careful with that and make sure if you want the lesson available and don't want to lose your work that you don't delete it from your iPad. What's really nice is it is up on the web and so your students can access it anytime they want to review. Alright, so let's start a new lesson and this time I'm going to take some time to set up my slides. I'm going to be an elementary teacher working with how to add money. So I'm going to go to my photo gallery to my coins collection and I'm going to pull out one at a time the coins I need for this lesson. You can't select more than one coin at a time unfortunately. Okay, so I have all four of them now and what I'm going to do is tap on each of them and resize them a bit and you do that by pinching together with two fingers on the picture and I'm going to see if I can't make these somewhat relative in size kind of like they are in real life. Not time to be a perfectionist. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, because in a moment I'm thinking ahead, I'm going to write a number on here and then demonstrate how to use the pictures to make that number, that amount of money. Real quick, as I'm thinking of that, I want to lock each of these in place. And you'll see in a moment why I did that. And because I'm going to do this at least one more time in my demo video and I don't want to set this whole slide up again or have to erase all my work, I want another slide exactly like this one. So what I'm going to do in the bottom left corner, notice the little couple of, they look like two pieces of paper stacked on each other with a plus sign. If I tap that, I get the option to duplicate this page or if I had writing on it, I could duplicate the page and the ink, the writing I have on it. I'm just going to say duplicate page and notice now at the bottom I'm on page two of two. If I back up using the arrow in the bottom left corner, I'm on page one of two. Now I am going to use my ink and I'm going to tell the students that we are going to find 93 cents on this page. Then I'm going to go to the next page and tell them that we're going to find 57 cents. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my 93 cents page. Now I have things set up the way I want to. So I'm going to record my demo. So here it goes, I'm going to tap record. Hello students, we're going to review making the right amount of money with some change. So we've been working on this in class and we know that a quarter 
is 25 cents and a dime is how much? That's right, 10 cents. And then we know a nickel is 5 cents, good. And then a penny is 1 cent, excellent. So now I need to make 93 cents with my change over here. Remember we start with the largest piece of money first and add it up as far as we can until it won't fit anymore. So let me just draw a little line here to show the difference between where we're making our money and where we have our money. So for 93 cents, the first thing I'm going to do is start with some quarters because 93 is a pretty big number. So I know that if I move one quarter over here, now I have 25 cents. I'm going to move another quarter. Now I have how much? That's right, 50 cents because 25 plus 25 is 50. I'm getting closer but I think I can fit at least one more because 50 plus another 25 would be 75 cents. So I'm going to bring another quarter over. There we go. Okay, so now I have 75 cents. If I move one more quarter, how much am I going to have? Too much. I would have a whole dollar. So now I have to start adding some dimes. So 75 cents plus 10 cents is 85 cents. If I add one more dime, how much am I going to have? 95, so that's too much. So now I go to my nickel. Remember I have 85 cents right now. So if I add five more cents to that, now I have 90 cents. Do I have room for another nickel? Nope, because then I would have 95 cents, so it must be time for some pennies. So 90 cents plus one cent is 91 plus another cent is 92 plus another cent is 93 cents. Awesome. Okay, so now I have successfully made 93 cents with my coins. Let's do one more together. Now we have 57 cents. I'm not going to write the values of the coins this time. Let's see if we can keep that in our head. So for 57 cents, I start with my quarters. One quarter, that's 25 cents. If I do a second quarter, that's 50 cents. I'm getting very close. Okay, so do I need a dime? Well, if I already have 50 cents and I add a dime, I'm going to get all the way to 60 and that's too much, isn't it? So we're not going to be able to use our dime to make 57 cents. How about a nickel? Well, 50 cents plus 5 cents is 55 cents, so I'm good. And now, if I add another nickel, too much. I would go past my 57, so it must be penny time. So 55 plus 1 is 56, plus 1 more is 57. Yay! So I have created 57 cents. Now, boys and girls, you are going to get to go visit our center, our learning center today, and use the iPad to show Miss Kendall how you would solve some of these problems. In class, I'm going to show you how to use the same app that I used to make this little demo video, and then you're going to get to talk me through and your classmates through how you create different amounts of money. Doesn't that sound fun? Okay. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed our little tutorial. Remember, you can rewatch it on my website anytime you want. And then after you have created your tutorials, we'll put those up there and you can watch each other's work too. Okay? All right. Thank you for learning with me today. Okay, so then I pressed the stop button up there in the top right corner and I'm done recording this video. So I'm going to tap done in the top left and save lesson and I'm going to call it counting coins. There we go. I'm going to tap next and this time you'll notice I have a couple more options than I did when I created my first video in a previous tutorial and that's because I've now created an account on the EduCreations website. For simplicity right now I'm just going to make this public but you can explore the EduCreations website and you can actually have your students create accounts so that you can just share lessons with them. I think it's nice to share with the public simply because other teachers and other students can benefit from your work. So I'm going to call mine public. I'm going to keep mine professional development, but if I were truly posting this for student use, it might go under probably mathematics, I'm thinking. But for now, I'm going to keep it under professional development. It tells me I'm already logged in as myself, but just in case this was not me. Let's say that you've allowed your students to create their own accounts on EduCreations. They might have to log out and log in. With really young students, I would probably just let them save their lessons under your account. One other thing, if young students are doing this, I would have them perhaps put just their first name on their slide. So I would envision that each student would have one slide where they would talk through their reasoning for creating the amount of money they did and they would each perhaps put their name in the bottom right corner of the slide but you don't want their full name out there even if you have permission for it just my opinion I don't think it's necessary so I'm gonna go ahead and tap save right here because it's logged in as me and it's gonna take a moment and it's uploading to the website but it's also saved here of course on my iPad alright and on the page on our website where I have these exam these uh, tutorials I will also post the final outcome of the ones you saw me record so that you can see what it really looks like to the end user so that's a little bit of a leap you just have to make realizing that you've just created a video and it's gonna look a little different on the end user than it did for you they're not necessarily gonna see you tapping all the controls and everything so I hope this has given you a couple of good examples of how to use EduCreations in your classroom. And I'm sure by looking through samples either on the EduCreations website or here under Featured in your app, you will get lots of other ideas and they'll be more in depth because these teachers made them for real teaching. And there's nothing saying that you couldn't use one of these videos in class because they're obviously public if they're showing up in your app to teach your own students. So that's another neat thing about EduCreations is you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. You can um, look through and you can actually go by subject area here in the top left corner and look for specific subjects and uh, see for yourself. Now, not all of these are created equal you're the teacher so you can make that judgment call. So again, I hope you've enjoyed learning how to use EduCreations and that you will experiment and go way further than I did. This concludes our tutorial on creating a lesson in the EduCreations iPad app which incorporates graphics. If you are viewing this video as part of iPad Basic Training, please continue your learning as instructed in the online materials.